Without further ado, I really want to sort of hand over to our first speaker, uh, Professor Gabinda Chowdhury. Uh, Gabinda is a professor of information science at the Department of Computer and Information Science at Strathclyde. And Gabinda's research focuses on digital libraries and information services, trying to understand how people access and use information and data in different contexts. So I'm going to hand over to Gabinda and I'm very much looking forward to your presentation. Thanks so much. Um, thanks, William, uh, for inviting me. This is really a great opportunity for me to share my experience with you. Um, I have been um, doing research on broadly on sustainable information for nearly 15 years now. I, I, I think the first article that I wrote in was in 2008. Um, at the moment, I'm working with various um, agencies, institutions. Uh, I'm running um, a, a small project funded by the Scottish Library and Information Council, and uh, one, two, three project proposals are. Uh, at, at different stages of review. So what I'll, I'd like to share with you is some of my uh, kind of um, understanding of the global sustainable development goals and what I think uh, the entire Libyan information sector can do. I will focus more on the academic and research libraries given uh, the forum, but I will also draw um, some references from other um, studies and various agencies. So, right. Um, now, the basic tenet or hypothesis um, of my presentation and my entire kind of, you know, um, research portfolio um, in this area is that I believe that libraries are the only institutions in the world that have access to the entire population. So over 320,000 public libraries and more than a million other types of libraries, you know, research libraries and special libraries and so on. Virtually uh, libraries can reach out to everyone. And so that's number one. Number two is that sustainable development goals cannot be achieved without the involvement of everyone in the world. So it's basically people who can make the changes and they can make these changes at different levels, right from policymakers to data creators to sort of, you know, the various activities that people do in everyday life to their own personal behavior and personal uh, practices, everyday practices and, and so on. So people are at the heart of sustainable development goals and libraries are the only institutions that can reach out to people. So that's kind of the basic hypothesis. Now, when you talk about sustainability, um, there are two ways that we can look at. One is library as an institution that is a sustainable institution. But more importantly, I strongly believe that libraries can make the major difference, the key difference, uh, key contribution to sustainable development goals through sustainable library services. So I will try and, and, and sort of expand on some of these things. Now, this is these 17 icons probably are familiar to um, all of you. Now, although when we talk about sustainability, Often people take the narrow view of sustainability, which is SDG 13, Sustainable Development Goal 13, Climate Change. However, um, as I will show you uh, towards the end of my presentation, that um, libraries and information services can virtually make contributions to every sustainable development goals. So, Again, there are different terms that occur in literature with regard to sustainability, climate change, you know, biodiversity, environment, ecosystem, and so on. And although there is a there is a specific goal for sustainable development, um, sorry, for, for climate change, which is SDG 13, there are many other goals in which the word sustainability uh, appear. There are some examples. 
Uh, just, these are just a few examples that, as you can see, for example, in the context of um, Sustainable Development Goals 1.5, it says climate-related extreme events and environmental shocks and disaster management and so on. Similarly, in education, education for sustainable development. Um, for sustainable cities, SDG 11, there is again kind of, you know, environmental impact on cities. So these are some of the examples. Um, which means that, and, and these are taken from the complete list of all the sustainable development goals and 169 uh, targets. These are only examples. I have not picked up all of them. The point I'm trying to make is that the word sustainability and sustainable development goals should not be taken narrowly. It actually spreads over almost, almost every sustainable development goal. And libraries indeed, as I will try and demonstrate, can contribute to all of them. So here are some studies um, and, and reports that I will focus on very quickly. I'll scan uh, through them to highlight some of the points that they have identified. IFLA, as you know, IFLA um, special uh, interest groups in, in sustainable uh, environmental library services, it proves that you know there are some of the specific sorry some of the activities uh, or or some of the areas where sustainable um, libraries can contribute through green buildings and equi equipment, green office principles, uh, sustainable economy that is the sustainable consumption and circular economy and so on, and more importantly sustainable library services which is access to all the information related to basically if we talk about sustainable development goals, then you know, providing access to relevant uh, information and data with uh, um, regard to every sustainable development goal and their targets and so on. Environmental education, again, that's an important area. Um, um, edu sustainable education on sustainability, environment, et cetera. And positive carbon handprint. I think this is something, uh, an interesting concept, which shows that we are familiar with the, uh, with the carbon footprint, which is basically the energy cost and environmental cost of any activity or any product or any service. A handprint is something which is actually how it is offset or how it is kind of, you know, it's the, the carbon footprint can be, <coughs> excuse me, balanced with uh, certain things given time and um, you know i can discuss this towards the end of that but that's a that's an interesting concept um the the finnish uh, public libraries they have come up with um some measures of carbon handprint and in fact they give now in finland they give uh, library cards to uh, public library users where they can actually tap and see what has been their carbon footprint of course through the use of libraries um, there are other aspects of sustainability that we should consider, and if uh, again, if Lansley highlights that, that social sustainability, environmental sustainability, or environmental management, and commitment to overall all the other SDGs. So, again, as I um, pointed out earlier, that sustainable development goals are, are there are seventeen of them. Climate change is only one. So, libraries can contribute to while. Uh, you know, mind, being mindful of climate change is DG13, but there are many other sustainable development goals where libraries can contribute directly and probably through its collections and services to every sustainable development goal. Now, there are some challenges of sustainability. It's, it's becoming slowly kind of, you know, um, a common the lingua franca, if you say everyday lingua franca, sustainable development goals, but there is a lack of understanding. And I will show you some data just to demonstrate that. Lack of an agreed strategy for the sector. I think that is something that still sort of, you know, we are grappling with, you know, we, we are, there are, there have been some examples, uh, good practice and so on, but sector wide, there isn't anything like that like you know in other areas for example sector-wide agreement on um, collection development on services and, and so on and so forth but with regard to sustainability there hasn't been any 
um, kind of agreed strategy across the sector. Targets and indicators, again, um, it is very difficult. We do not really know and have spoken to many people, many uh, institutions, including national libraries and uh, organizations of national libraries and various professional associations, um, in, including high schools, ACEST, uh, Alice and, and CELIP and so on. Uh, there are sort of been a clear understanding. There isn't any clear understanding of, of, of targets and indicators. There is no formal reporting tool that you know, if you are leading a library, you know, you really do not have a framework to capture data as to what you are contributing to, how you are contributing to the SDGs, and what is the reporting mechanism? How can you sort of report on these achievements uh, in sustainable development goals and contributions made by the libraries? And collectively, as a sector, we do not have that. Now, all these I said can be backed up by some data, and this is something. Um, the OCLC survey, they conducted um, a survey amongst uh, 1,700 Libyan information staff worldwide, uh, and 63% said that they are somewhat familiar with, with the SDGs, but somewhat. Uh, it's only a very few who are really conversant or, or sort of, you know, um, is, is quite clear about the sustainable development goals. It's being discussed at different levels. Um, one thing that I should um, draw your attention to is the last bullet point, which I have highlighted. It's only 1% from the Association of Information Science and Technology, the global largest professional body. So as you can see, and this is a very recent survey, so which shows that there has not been really kind of an open discussion about it. And although everyone broadly understands that libraries have a role to play, but it is not being part of everyday discussion and strategy and action plans and so on. Again, this is uh, these two slides, sort of figures from uh, the, the, the OCLC survey. It shows that um, over 40% of the uh, libraries reported that sustainability is not, not incorporated in the library strategy. And only 12.67% says that uh, within the academic libraries, it is explicitly um, referenced or explicitly discussed in their strategy. And for public libraries, it's slightly less, but it's only 11, 12%. So which means that the, the sustainability agenda um, has not really been brought into the strategy of the academic and public libraries. Um, the survey also wanted to um, find out that where libraries think, uh, the library professionals think that um, libraries can contribute. These are the five top areas of sustainable development goals where the libraries, according to this OCLC survey, where the libraries can contribute to, of course, SDG 4 quality education, uh, decent work and economic growth, SDG 8, reduced inequalities, SDG 11, SDG 16, obviously SDG 16.10 is uh, public access to information. So that's where libraries can contribute to and resource sharing, cooperation, collaborations, which is SDG 17. And this is kind of priority based on a ranking of five. Um, you know, the top one is SDG four, quality education, and the bottom one is um, so through partnership and, and, and uh, resource sharing and collaborations. So this is again sort of you know uh, a very recent survey um, reported earlier this year, and um, I was talking to the lead uh, of um, this survey. Uh, from OCLC, Lynn Conway, a good friend of mine. Uh, I spoke to her immediately after this came out in, in March this year and again at uh, ACIST uh, two weeks ago. There's still sort of, you know, her belief is that there is a lot more awareness, campaigning, advocacy needs to be done within the even LIS sector to kind of create this momentum and better understanding of sustainable development goals. A bit better is the um, is called the Australian um, University uh, Libraries, 
Um, and we have come up with um, a, a strategy document which includes um, some of these areas like promoting literacy, uh, um, you know, closing the gaps that is equitable access to information, um, communicating knowledge created within the universities and passing on to, to the general community and, and, and wider society um, and community knowledge being, acting as a hub. So these are some of the areas that they have identified. And I must say that, you know, it is interesting to read this um, document, this came out in 2019, I think, or 2020, at, at least three years ago, three to four years ago. And they have included the sustainability in, in, in their um, strategy. Um, the European survey, um, which is again, uh, the, every day is a body of 30 or 31 professional uh, associations in Europe. They also did a survey very recently, again, as you can see from the reference, 2023. Um, and they also have identified where libraries can uh, contribute, and some of these areas are listed here. Um, you will, you will, I'll, I'll uh, make sure that these slides are available to you and open, maybe openly accessible so that people can see it. Um, so these are some of the ability services. Now, one thing is important uh, that what does it mean that the, the carbon footprint of libraries? For the first time, um, only one university, sorry, national library have come up with their carbon footprint, although it is a very, very kind of, you know, simplistic approach they have taken, and they have stated it very explicitly. But it says that, um, you know, um, the carbon footprint of the National Library of Finland is 1,018 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. What does it mean? It means about more than a 1,000 passenger plane, you know, flights between London and New York back and forth. Or it is nearly 50,000 trees that need to be planted to offset this. This is just an idea that what is the extent of this carbon footprint. However, this, this study is very simplistic and the true carbon footprint, and they have, you know, clearly stated it in their report. Um, the, you can see these links and uh, you can go to the full report and they say that it, they have taken purposely a simplistic approach and this this summarizes that um you know the largely um the carbon footprint was um due to the energy consumption uh, of the library infrastructure and facilities uh, and of course they have no control over it because they do not own the building it is part of the university and the university's state management uh, actually um, looks after that but this is again a kind of uh, some ballpark figure some idea as to and there is a methodology exists although i must say that uh, it is a very simplistic approach that they have taken uh, but that's one some way of um, of measuring uh, the carbon footprint. What is needed? Again, as I said, that the libraries are in a very strong position to reach out to people, to educate people, to empower people in making contributions. And we need a strategy. I mentioned it before. We need an agreed framework of targets and indicators. Uh, education for sustainable development, particularly for academic and research libraries, this is an area where academic and research libraries can make a real contribution. Um, education for sustainable development, even school libraries can, can uh, play a huge role. Public libraries broadly, yes, for general um, sort of education and literacy and so on. But, but primarily, education for sustainable development falls within, the, very rightly, within the portfolio of the academic and research libraries and resources and policies and so on, and more importantly, data gathering and, and reporting tools. Um, education for Sustainable Development, as you can see, that uh, this is a kind of promoted by UNESCO, and there are very clear guidelines as to what can be done. And there are some examples of, of ESD that some university libraries around the world they have introduced. I'll finish with this, this um, diagram. Uh, as you can see, let me see, yeah, as you can see that we can look at, from sustainability point of view, we can look at library as a sustainable institution, and that can be measured through kind of sustainable physical infrastructure and policies, collections and services, and some tra training and education on sustainability, and they can then contribute to various SDGs 
particularly by building sustainable collections and services, libraries can really contribute to every sustainable development goal, SDG, more specifically on some of those. Um, similarly, targeted data and information services and education for sustainable development, again, can contribute to some specific SDG targets like sustainable consumption behavior, for example, like um, you know sustainability thinking, education for sustainable development at all levels, and so on, and 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 also through cooperation and collaborations, um, again, uh, libraries can contribute to several SDGs. Not every library will have resources or capacity to contribute to every SDG, but collectively as a sector, we can demonstrate that we can contribute to all the SDGs. And again, we can create, more importantly, we can create the future generations of our society who will be environmentally literate, who will be conscious in all the sustainable development goals, and they can then bring in all of those in their everyday activity, whatever business, whatever management, whatever education, whatever uh, profession they are in. So I'll stop here and um, sort of uh, probably we'll move on to the next talk, but I'll be happy to take some questions towards the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabinda. That was was really great and really, really inspiring as well. That sort of opportunity for libraries as enablers and your your final slide there around, you know, thinking about a couple of those kind of different different lenses. So so thank you. And um, I encourage colleagues on the call, yes, please be thinking about kind of chat uh, some some you know some questions and, and so on. We'll do the QA kind of after Gabinda and Mimi. But I'm delighted to move on to our our second speaker. So Mimi Surfert Wirt uh, started her career at Stellenbosch in Library and Information Services as a special collections librarian. And she has a BBBL degree from Stellenbosch and a master's in information science um, from the University of Pretoria. Uh, Mimi's currently the director of digital scholarship and marketing at Stellenbosch. And this enables her to contribute to areas such as open access and digital heritage. And we look forward to finding out more around kind of uh, some of that work and Stellenbosch and its repository and SDGs. So I'm going to hand over to you, Mimi, and welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. Okay, so just a little correction there, William, but you wouldn't have known. So my title changed just last week. So I am, in fact, now um, the Director for Scholarly Communication and Marketing. Um, our digital scholarship uh, division has had a name change to scholarly communication, which we feel is perhaps a bit more, a bit broader. Um, so, yes. Um, so my talk is, is going to, to differ a bit from Gobinda. Gobinda, it was very interesting and in, in how you also touched on, on how libraries can actually more directly um, contribute to SDGs. Mine will actually be focusing on um, contribution to SDG research. Um, in the broader university community, and then of course also focusing on specifically on the role of the library. So let me just go forward here. Okay, so just a quick outline. Um, so firstly, just uh, the broader view of Stellenbosch University Library, um, uh, Stellenbosch University, sorry, and Sustainable Development Goals. Um, then the library, how we can potentially contribute to SDG research improving the findability of SDG related research output, um, the role of the repository, looking at what we are currently doing, and then ending off with some examples, which we think um, we can look at showing impact um, in terms of research on SDGs. So for those of you who are not familiar with Stellenbosch University, so Stellenbosch is uh, quite an old town situated in the Western Cape province of South Africa. And I'm sure you have now heard that we are in summer and it is 35 degrees outside. Uh, so yes. Um, so we are a public university uh, serving around 30,000 students. 
So if we look at the university's vision, it states that Stellenbosch University wants to be Africa's leading research intensive university, globally recognized as excellent, inclusive and innovative, where we advance knowledge in the service of society. And one of our core strategic themes at the university is research for impact. So one can easily see, especially if you look at words like knowledge in the service of society, research for impact, that reaching the sustainability goals of both the UN 2030 Agenda and the AU Agenda 2063 falls within this vision and strategy of the university. So to further support this agenda, um, there was a sustainable development impact hub founded at Stellenbosch University in late 2021. The hub has four key objectives, namely to raise awareness um, at Stellenbosch University and its partners on existing SDG related activities, including sustainability literacy. Also to create partnerships at Stellenbosch with our partner institutions through international collaborations for SDG research, education and promotion. To all coordinate the collection of data to measure impact and consolidate resources and to communicate the university's contributions to the overarching sustainability agendas. So the university also recognizes and rewards research on SDGs. Um, I recently attended the annual research rewards, which was hosted by our deputy vice chancellor for research um, innovation and postgraduate studies. Um, and it was very interesting to note that, except for the fact that almost 90% of the recipients were women, um, I suppose almost about, if I have to guess, about two thirds um, of uh, the recipients, their research really focused on um, supporting SDGs, and especially in the field of medicine and health sciences, but also very much interdisciplinary. So according to the university's webpage, the SDGs that they are currently focusing on are no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, reduced inequalities, life on land, and peace, justice, and strong institutions. So moving on to how the library can contribute to SDG research. So firstly, if we look at this, actually just very simplistically, um, the library's role as a provider of uh, resources for research can obviously contribute to research on SDGs as well. Perhaps we should look at um, describing these resources a bit better in the context of SDGs, perhaps looking at um, metadata, in including metadata in our catalogs, um, where a resource should relate directly to an SDG. Here we have to reach out to our metadata librarians who we know these days do very little original cataloging and have a massive workload. So I'm not sure if this would be viable, but it is definitely an option. Another way in which we are continuously contributing is with regard to um, bibliometrics and measuring impact of SDG research. We use products such as SciVal to support, for example, the SDG hub here at Stellenbosch and also help, med, um, help researchers to measure the impact of their research. We're constantly also striving to measure not only academic impact in terms of citations, but also societal impact, which is a bit more challenging. But one would really like to see that reference in a white paper or in a policy or even in legislation where you know that the research has impacted on ground level um, and is addressing an SDG. So that is really the goal and that also comes back to knowledge in the service of society. So in terms of repositories, which is um, the field I'm mainly active in, there seems to be plans uh, to be able to accommodate information on SDGs with various configurations in the newer versions of DSpace. Um, for the non-librarians, DSpace is a, a, a open source repository software, which we currently use also here at Stellenbosch. So they are looking at metadata customization where one can create specific, specific metadata fields related to SDG research. 
Also, thematic collections within repositories to help organize and categorize content based on sustainability goals. Um, integration with external systems through APIs. The use of controlled vocabularies when it comes to describing um, work on SDGs. And lastly, customization through add-ons and plugins. So we've been um, researching this for quite a while, and it's it's been difficult to really put our finger on something at this stage which will work in our specific repository. Um, but 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 some of it is already being done, and and I will cover this in 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 my next uh, little bit. So moving on. So how can we improve the findability of SDG related research output? Um, in our repository. Okay, so we have been operating an institutional um, repository named Sun Scholar here at Stellenbosch University Library and Information Service since 2008, which makes it one of the more mature repositories um, in South Africa. In our repository, you will find research papers, articles, theses, dissertations, and other scholarly works by Stellenbosch University authors. And of course, some of these will relate to sustainable development goals. So we have recently, and this is just a bit technical, we've recently migrated to version seven of DSpace, which is the software that we use. And we are currently ironing out issues related to this upgrade. Um, it's been traumatic. And also in terms of, I think, just to go back to Govinda's uh, talk in terms of sustainability in libraries, sustainability of our systems is, is really a big deal. Um, and being now going through this process where normally it is um, when you do a version upgrade, it is simply an upgrade. But in this case, it was actually a migration of the entire repository. Anyway, be that as it may, we have recently embarked on a project where we are starting to add SDG metadata to records relating to SDGs. We do this. Sorry, I just need to move on here quickly. Okay, so we do this um, by adding keywords, um, stipulating the specific number of the SDG the record relates to. We did discuss this with our metadata staff, but it is, so we do have their input, but this is currently done by repository staff rather than metadata librarians. So we find that this improves the findability of SDG related research in the repository. I also want to mention, and I see that we actually do have um, somebody from Pretoria in the audience. I think it was Lindiwe, if I'm, if I'm not um, mistaken. So we work quite closely with the South African SDG Hub, which is managed by the University of Pretoria. So one of the things they do is they harvest um, metadata um, of all the SDG research output from all South African institutional repositories as well as a few repositories abroad. So including this SDG metadata, it will also make it easier for them in their process, making it more efficient, as of course they rely on machines to identify SDG research. So in relation to that, um, I'm interested to hear, maybe in six months time, if, if, if this has made a difference, because as I understand that the machine um, harvesting process is also not always spot on. And I think in this case, what is really needed is, is, and I'm very lucky, and I think in our case, that there is a willingness um, among staff to, to think out of the box a little bit and maybe just to go a little bit of that extra mile to recognize when you're sitting with a thesis in front of you that you are cataloging from scratch to ask yourself whether this is pertaining specifically to one of the SDGs. So lastly, um, I want to talk about uh, what we call, or what we would like to call a journey of impact. So open access um, and we, what we feel it, it, it does for the SDGs. So at Stellenbosch University Library, we know that the research we make available is being accessed and not only academically. So the top, three most viewed items in our repository. And I must say this statistic is not entirely new. It is a few years old, but um, of course with the upgrade, we are still not um, having all of our legacy stats. So this is the best I can do. 
But the top three most viewed items in our repository all address practical societal issues which can be linked to sustainable development goals. The items, as you can see on your screen, number one is a thesis done in the year 2000 addressing the issue of turnover among public sector registered nurses in South Africa, accessed over 35,000 times and cited over 50 times, which is quite unique for a thesis. Um, number two, 2014 thesis addressing women's vulnerability in society. And number three, a 2007 thesis um, on the causes of food insecurity in Southern Africa, which was accessed almost 10,000 times. Now, I don't believe it's a far cry to assume that this is a case of library infrastructure literally enabling open science for sustainable development, as can be seen by linking um, the issues there on the screen uh, with some of the SDGs. So another open access initiative at our library is hosting is a hosting service for open access journals, um, academic journals affiliated with our institution. And once again, we utilize open source software to facilitate this. In the usage of these journals, we can also see not only citations and academic impact, but definitely also societal interest. And as a matter of fact, our most used journal is a practitioner's journal on social work. The lower one of the, sorry, I'm just checking the time here. Um, so one of the latest endeavors, of course, in academic libraries has been to enter the world of open data. So Robert Callou, a Belgian informatic engineer, computer sciences said, when we have all data online, it will be great for humanity. It is a prerequisite to solving many problems that humankind faces. So Stellenbosch University Library also ventured into the sphere of open data and research data by launching an open data research repository, research data repository in 2019. So here again, if we look at the usage, it's quite interesting. So we've got this example and I actually wish that I could, could play the video, but it, I couldn't put my finger on it and it is a bit long and a bit boring, but anyway, so, it's videos of experiments done on a local farm in the Western Cape, illustrating the reaction of ewes, as in female sheep, to the odor um, of their own lambs. Um, and it's, this is something which is significant, obviously, in terms of behavioral ecology and farming practice. Now, this data set in the first three months after upload, it was viewed almost 600 times, downloaded. 87 times. Now, I don't know, but I cannot think that anybody else except for sheep farmers could possibly be interested in downloading those videos. And here again, I think we could possibly um, have a link to, to goal two. So I hope I'm not taking it too far, but I hope that these examples can at least illustrate um, that repositories are an important tool in the library's toolkit in terms of supporting um, SDG research. So thank you. I would also welcome any questions except difficult ones. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. And I think, yes, absolutely, that, that close, closing comment about kind of repositories is definitely something that can be in libraries, toolkits, and, and also um, I think kind of helps to kind of underline some of Govinda's points as well around sort of the role that the libraries can play both as kind of an enabler uh, to to support uh, to support that. So I'm we we've, we've got about kind of 10 minutes or so. So I'm going to open the floor to questions via sort of chat or if colleagues want to put their uh, hand up, and while they're thinking about that, um, I might um, enjoy chair's privilege and ask Gabinda uh, a sort of an opening question, which is probably not a very fair question, unfortunately, Gabinda, which is you identified. So I, I think your your talk was incredibly inspiring, uh, but also very kind of realistic, thinking about some of those challenges which you had identified. Um, 
if you were to prioritize, or if we were as a community to pick one of those one of those challenges, uh, which um, which you had shared uh, in terms of kind of strategy, targets, recording, awareness, is is there one, uh, or 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 is it that they're all quite interconnected and and holistic? Uh, thank you, William. They are interconnected, but I think what we my first priority will be to come up with a strategy for the sector because I think what, what is happening is that everyone is doing their bit, but there isn't any kind of coordination there. And more importantly, we are not in a position to even tell our pay masters, whether it is the university or whether it is uh, the government or local council, whoever it is, that we are actually making a lot more contribution that they know about. So in fact, and, and this, this is very much reflected with uh, Mimi's work as well, that by making content available through these open access repositories, if we can collect data as to, and as Mimi has pointed out, that if we can collect data and say that, look, these are the people who are accessing our data, and this is how it is, being kind of you know used in their research so again indirectly libraries are playing quite a lot of uh, important roles there similarly for example libraries played a huge role you know even indirectly they are playing in making data uh, and information services more equitable more accessible to everyone and that is one of the major goals of the even sdg which is sdg 5 gender equality and SDG 10, general um, equality amongst uh, different cross-sections of society. So I think a strategy will help the sector to at least map what is being done and therefore lead to, that will lead to some kind of a reporting framework. Great, no, thank you very much. I've, I've taken some notes there, these are, uh, no, yes, the yeah, some some really kind of good challenges for us there. We've got uh, a question from from the audience from Nicola Cockerell asking, um, the carbon handprint concept sounds interesting, and are there established ways of considering this or measuring it? So I guess this ties back to the that that Finnish work that you had mentioned. Yes, um, I can if you. If you go to um, the the if you Google it and then you can find that in the Finnish public libraries they again are kind of the leaders in this um, and obviously because Harris Avita who is leader of that research group is also chair of the IFLA Ensulib so they have developed a mechanism a tool to calculate the carbon handprint. What they do is, uh, and they have given kind of details of, of um, how they do it, the analysis and so on. What they say is that the carbon footprint of a book, if we buy a book, is how much? They say that it's sort of, they have calculated it. Uh, I can't remember the figure on the top of my head, but it says something like, say, 100 grams of, uh, of um, carbon dioxide or something of that sort. Now, if you are a library user. And then again, they have identified that as a library user, these are some of the more environment friendly way that you can use your library, like maybe walking or uh, cycling or, and things like that. Then how much carbon you are offsetting for that particular book. So the idea being that if a book is produced, then it already comes with some carbon footprint, right? Irrespective of whether it is ever used or not. But more it is used, the better it is in a way to be justified that its carbon footprint is worth it is. And then if it is used more and more and more frequently in a more environment friendly way, then the, it generates actually, it saves more carbon than it actually uh, created or, or consumed during the production process. And that's what is carbon handprint. Really interesting, and it it made me think as well there about um, not just the the physical books, but yes, there's a there's a whole world there around our e resources and our you know and our digital our digital and digitized 
collections and the, the sort of handprints there. Um, that's great. Thank you. Um, one, one more for, for you, Gabinga, another simple, simple one uh, around those sort of key challenges, those lacks that we kind of mentioned, the awareness, the strategy, the targets, the indicators, the recording. Um, do you think, so uh, uh, Esther uh, from Leicester is asking, do you think that sector-wide agreements are achievable? And she's put in brackets, in a timely manner. Uh, it, it has to be. There may be kind of, you know, more flexible way. Now, mind you, we have agreed to some of the most difficult things, even from very early age. We came up with Mark cataloging in the 1960s. And then, of course, it went to different uh, revisions and so on and so forth. We all have agreed to use some tools that is used for managing library collections and tools and standards and so on. So we do not agree 100% on everything, but you know, for anything, there has to be a standard, standard way of measuring, standard way of reporting and so on, with some flexibility in, in, in there. It, it will not that everything will be applicable to every library. They can choose on or focus on depending on their composition, depending on their focus and, and so on. But I think it is important that we, as a sector, we agree to some of the things that we want to measure. At the moment, we are not really clear as to what to measure and how to measure it. Great, thank you so much. The, and I sort of, I, I, I'm going to use Chair's privilege again, sort of, Mimi, I think it's really interesting sort of looking at that role, that, that demonstrate that demonstrable role that you could showcase where the sort of the library is, is able to kind of highlight some of that SDG sort of uh sort of research. Are there are there any any suggestions or, or key recommendations that you would make from your experience of of what kind of libraries uh, you know, libraries should be thinking, or, or libraries or repository managers should be thinking about in in sort of embedding um, those SDGs from your experience in Stellenbosch. Mm. Yeah, so as I've mentioned, um, you know, the, the the sort of little bit that we're doing at the moment is 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 um, making a difference. Uh, I think it's crucial, though, and I think that Govinda also um, maybe uh, talked about this or, or referred to it that uh, we also share this with with um, university administration um, so that they are also aware um, of, of, of the difference that the library is making because, you know, they're all about rankings and all kinds of other nonsense, whereas, you know, this is the stuff that, that's really making a difference on the ground. And I think it is really dem demonstrable, as you said. And just also a quick mention that um, I also believe that there are some, some challenges, and I think... Uh, one of the things is that there's perhaps not always a willingness um, uh, in terms of, of library staff to, to think out of the box. And then also um, wider, I, I don't know if anybody will agree, but it also seems as if a lot of people are sort of jumping on the SDG bandwagon and sticking it everywhere and trying to, 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 to make it something where you're in a field where it's not related at all, but you're saying, okay, how can our company contribute to SDGs? Where sometimes it's very noble, but I think sometimes it is also just a question of, of you know, trying to look like you, you, you're making a societal impact, where I think libraries are actually quite posed um, to, to do make a real difference directly and indirectly. No, yeah, no, absolutely, I agree, and I think, um, I, I think libraries as that sort of role as sort of those educators and uh, being able to kind of empower and look at what we can do with those instructions, we can definitely look at how we can walk that SDG kind of sort of walk. Um, there is a comment i'm just scanning through here um yeah there was a question about yeah recording the uh, uh recording in slides yes we will uh make those available um and one of the challenges that kind of a, a uh, amy a, a colleague in the record keeping kind of archive sector has said one of the biggest challenges is the overwhelming creation of digital content and then i guess in turn managing uh, kind of either kind of mapping or, or, or managing managing that. 
uh, as well. So I think that's very much something uh, that, that's on our mind as well around this. Um, so we've just got another minute or two. I'm going to invite you both. Are there any kind of closing closing comments or thoughts you want to, to make? There's definitely definitely some some actions, I think, for us to take away as a, as a community to think about this, but also I think for us to pick up in our digital cafe in in December, which um, everyone is cordially invited to bring your bring your challenges and problems, but also you know where we can work collectively together, which is part of the drive uh, around bringing people together uh, around these these forums. Right. Yes, I could maybe just, if I may, end off by saying yes, I I, I agree. It would also be um, amazing to to do something sector wide. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, we are definitely differences in our in our countries in terms of how libraries work together. Um, in in you know. Um, yeah, over borders or in a certain country. Uh, we have several library consortia in South Africa. And as you have said, Govinda, we have agreed on many things in the past. But then also, if I think of some very basic issues, which we're still not agreeing on and cannot work on together. Um, but yes, it would be fantastic if there could be sort of a sector-wide um, collaboration in countries or in districts um, to see how we can put this on the map and collectively work towards it. If I may add very quickly in 30 seconds, people are our resources. So people should come together and try and like Silip Green Libraries um, Network is a good example. Uh, I have, I'm doing now a research uh, funded by SLEEK on trying to map exactly what is being done in the public and school libraries in Scotland. And amazingly, people are doing quite a lot. It's only that nobody knows that they are doing. So I think people are already doing. They are our uh, asset. We need to bring them together and try and learn from each other. And that's how we take a bottom-up approach. Yeah. 